What's going on everybody? Hope everybody's having an awesome day today. Uh, today I'm quickly going to show everybody how to rebuild one of these Hope Tech 3 levers or master cylinders, whatever you call it. So let's jump right in. So the spares we're going to use or consumables we're going to use today is degreaser, isopropyl alcohol, red rubber grease. I did check with Hope to see if they recommend dot based grease. They said no, rather use red rubber grease. Uh, dot 5.1 and your rebuild kit of course. And paper towels. Okay, so the tools we're going to need today is an assortment of picks. Um, I've got this little flat blade screwdriver which I've grounded around the point. I don't know what tool you can use to be similar to this, but this thing works awesome. A uh, generic 8mm spanner, a T10 Torx, some cotton swabs, an old toothbrush, uh, circular pliers, a 4mm Allen key, or a punch that's about 4mm with a roundish point. Maybe pliers, I'm not actually sure. And a rubber mallet, possibly. Okay, so we're going to start by just separating the lever into all the parts. We're either going to clean or replace seals and service onto it. So let's take the top cap off. This bladder is one of the things we're going to be replacing today, so put that one side. The two screws here and your cap. Um, next, we're going to remove the lever. So there's this small little circlip here at the bottom of the um, pivot pin. Um, I'm going to replace this one today with a little black one. Let me just show you it here. I'm going to replace it with this one today because these are a bit soft and these are a bit harder and harder wearing and I'm not as concerned about losing this one. So I'm just going to bend it open and basically break it. Uh, if you're not going to put on a new one, just carefully uh, bend it open and make sure you don't lose it because these things love to go flying. Like that. Well, it actually just broke. So, yeah, just put this with anywhere you're going to put the old seals. And then now we're going to push this lever pin just out. Uh, it goes from the bottom out to the top. Uh, if it is a little bit stuck due to residue and stuff, it builds up under the bushes. You can hammer it out with a um, formal round. That's why I have it here today because this sits nicely in there and it shouldn't damage it if I'm going to tap on it. Uh, let's just see if I can... Mine's a little bit difficult, but it's not... It's not bad. Uh, so I'm just gonna rest my lever here and then gently tap it out with a rubber mallet. Here you can see the lever coming out, and this black residue that you can see on here is what usually causes it to be difficult. Oh, still doesn't want to come. So you can see this little bit of residue on the pin that would usually make it hard to get out. And that's why you might need to tap it. Uh, from here, just gently pull on the lever. This whole mechanism with the bite point and everything's going to come out. And then keep your finger on the piston inside. Because there's a big ass spring there that loves to jump out. So just be wary of that. Okay, so after taking the lever out, just make sure you keep a finger on the piston inside here because it's pushing up against a very big spring in here which loves to jump out. So just keep a finger on there just in case. And you'll see inside there there's a little bolt that's a T10 Torx. Loosen that and then the spring and everything should start to push out. Here comes the whole master cylinder and some more dirt fluid and the spring. Okay, so this part of the lever is now basically empty. Uh, you can just twist the spring opposite to its winding to remove it. Uh, then this is more, it's more of a dust seal. It's not, it doesn't 
push against the fluid or anything, but just put that one side of your old seals as well. Uh, this little screw that holds that seal in place is the same size as the cap screws, but it's much shorter. So just take note of that so you don't put them in the wrong place. Uh, then these two seals are your main piston seals. And we're gonna remove them uh, with a pick now. Okay, so these are your two main piston seals. Uh, we're gonna remove both of these and then clean everything. Um, so just be careful not to scratch the piston. It's not a complete train smash if you do. Take note, these seals are quite hard and tricky to get. Oh, yeah. yeah, usually you'll see they break before you get them off properly. So that's not an issue since we're going to be replacing them. This one's a bit easier because it has a large hole. You'll notice in your kit you have two of these seals and one of them has a big hole and the other one has quite a small one. Yeah. Don't let that fall. If you just want to try to break them, it's cool also with replacing them, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, there's the other one off. Uh, now you're going to take all of this and clean it as good as you can. Since we have this whole... Um, oh, another thing you should note. Uh, just separate these two pieces. You'll see there it goes. This spring is inside the bite point and reach adjust of your lever. So just, uh, it, mine didn't jump out now. So just be aware that that could happen and just make sure you don't lose the spring. Um, take all of this now and clean it very well. And then uh, I'll join you back when mine's all cleaned up and then we'll start replacing seals and putting it back, back together. So I've cleaned everything up now and you may notice on this pivot pin, there's this black residue I've been, I talked about that may make it hard to remove it. Um, if you feel it's not smooth or anything, you can just work over it with a um, kitchen scour or a sponge. And this will remove it pretty good, but it won't damage the pin. So you can try that if you like. This one isn't actually, you can't feel any of that, so I'm not too concerned about removing it all. But I did remove some of it a bit earlier, but you can't see when I cleaned everything. Now we're going to start to replace seals, so take the four seals out of your um, rebuild kit. It's not necessary to use a pick to open this, I'm just doing it. And there you'll see we've got um, four new seals, the cap, the piston holder and the two main piston seals. Uh, so let's start on the piston. Um, the one with the small hole that goes in front is the most difficult one to get on. Uh, so your piston will go into the lever with this brass part facing out towards the lever. Your seals are going to go on first the small one, then the bigger one. And they're gonna, their lips are going to face towards the hose. This is how it can hold its pressure. The seals flare out when um, there's pressure on them. So take some red rubber grease. And then, okay, not that much. Uh, just lube it up quite good because we are going to lose some of it as we put it on. You'll see now why. So, the seal is quite lubed up now. Now you're going to have to get this thing. So, with the cup facing away from the piston, you're going to have to get it over here. And I've done this before and I can tell you right now it's... It almost, it almost feels impossible to get it done. So what I like to do is I like to take a round, flattish screwdriver, something that doesn't have sharp points. This is very important. Something round or maybe a plastic pick, although I think it'll maybe break a plastic pick. And then we're gonna push, we're gonna push the seal from the side onto the piston and then just motivate it over with a pick or whatever you're using. This is the best and almost the only way I've ever found that works to do this. There's just, to work it on with your hand is 
near on impossible. Okay, so after a lot of swearing and bad words and poking myself with a pick and yeah, good times. <laughs> I managed to just get it on now and I'm just barely missed the camera. Um, but yeah, take note, that is that is probably the most difficult part of this whole rebuild to get that seal on without damaging it and just sealing it nicely. So remember the cup of the seal should face away from this brass point here. Uh, now we're gonna do the second seal. This one is tricky but not as not nearly as difficult. Okay, so now we're gonna take the second cup seal, press it onto the piston and then just move it over this lip. And then it'll sit here nice and tight and then you can move on. So remember to face the seal correctly and then you can just like rest the piston on a flat surface and press it on with your finger to get started. Can be a bit difficult but it's, it's fairly simple. There we go. Okay, so now it's on there and we just need to move it over this little lip here so it can sit here. Uh, you can use a pick to move it over if you want. Um, I'm just going to use this little flat blade. Obviously, um, something round would be my first recommendation so you don't scratch up the piston badly. Uh, remember, if you leave a tiny scratch on the piston, it's not the end of the world. The thing you really can't damage is the master cylinder bore here. Yeah. If that gets scratches, you're pretty much in for a new master cylinder. So now it's difficult to do this because everything's full of grease. But just move it over the lip and then you can work it from there with your finger. There it goes. So. Now our two seals are on in the correct place. Um, I'm just going to give them another bit of grease because I rubbed all of it, most of it off now while I was resting the second seal on. Um, then you're going to take your spring. Uh, one side, it's, it is um, orientated, so just give it a feel. One side, one side of the spring will go on easy and the other side won't go on at all. I think it's the opposite side, I don't think this is right. Yeah, it is this side. Uh, you can just twist it in the opposite direction it's winded to seat it. Um, just, yeah, it's almost on there now. I'm just gonna seat it properly. So basically what you wanna check is just that this bottom winding of the spring sits parallel, as parallel to the piston as possible. Obviously it's going to start to pull away as the spring starts to wind. Uh, then I like to grease it up just a little bit more. This is all, this may not, it may not be necessary to use as much grease as I am today. Um, I just like it's metal to metal contact and that's always preferably want to do that with as much grease as possible. So then, this seal is next, or the cap type thing. Um, this is more a dust seal, it's not, it doesn't experience any oil pressure or anything. So it just slips onto there, like that. We're gonna, this time it's facing, the cup is facing away from the inside. And then we're just carefully going to drop this into the master cylinder here. Just gently push it in so the seals don't get flipped around and then you'll start to feel the spring tension. I'm feeling it now. Okay, so next we're going to fit the shorter um, T10 screw and this uh, seal or dust cover thing is going to get seated in there and then we're going to screw it in and that's going to hold the spring and everything in place and the master cylinder. So press the um, piston in of your thumb or a finger and then I'm gonna put the screw in here 
try to grab it with you'll see it sinks in yeah to there I don't know how clear that is now maybe there's better and then take your T10 just work the screw into the hole there and start winding it in uh, once it's wound all the way in very lightly on this um, I don't have the torque specs for this but I'd say like maybe two newton meters at most just very 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 lightly just so it's in there and holding the spring and you can feel with your thumb on the piston if everything's smooth if that's all smooth then you're probably good from here on out so let's start assembling the lever okay so your lever came apart and you've cleaned everything up now so this little spring in front of the uh, bite point adjuster you'll see there's a little hole of a brass um, fillet thing in there Let's insert the spring into one side there then on your lever just in front of the reach adjust screw there's another hole of a brass fillet you're going to seat the spring in there as well and then obviously those two holes are lining up over each other uh, from here this little brass roller needs to push against this uh, brass indent here so gonna put your lever in here and then obviously try to line up all the holes um, you are gonna push against the um, master cylinder and the piston now so maybe just get a little bit of grease on this pin and push it through the first bush and put this whole thing in here try to line up the hole and then just keep pressure on the bush or on the pin you'll see it falls in there once everything's lined up try to press it through all the way if it doesn't go through all the way just give it a little tap still doesn't go through maybe just check the bottom yeah I'm just a little bit off there uh, now it's time to replace the um, circlip and obviously you saw me break the other one so I'm gonna fit this new one this new one on here okay so are we able to see the new circlip I put on here the little black one it's just a little bit harder um, once you've done that actually you don't have to fit this before yet but from here just pull your lever a few times and you should feel it's silky smooth like it feels like a brand spanking new brake lever this feels fantastic actually and then if you're happy with that then you can obviously refit your little circle okay so from here you're almost done basically you're gonna just take this little bladder seal or whatever it's called um, just gonna lightly gre grease the lips of it around there and then this is just lightly this whole thing's gonna sub be submerged in dot fluid anyway so put that on top up. okay things to note um if you can bleed your brakes and you're very confident of doing that reliably and regularly you can do this rebuild it's not insanely complicated and i believe anybody can do this it's not that hard um there i'll link the um, pdf for the exploded file of the lever down in the description below so you can have a look at everything inside you can see exactly where all the seals go um it's not it's not really it's really not that hard i'd recommend if you're technically inclined to try it it makes your levers feel brand new this thing feels absolutely fantastic and yeah it's fun to do and it's probably a good idea to do it regularly this lever is roughly three years old now um, it wasn't leaking or anything, but I could see the um, cover inside here starting to crack and um, These are going to a friend of mine now, so I just wanted to make them feel brand new for him So yeah, if you try this out good luck have fun and thanks for watching